Good morning, fourth graders. I'm excited to be back reading our read aloud book. Um, I know some of you have, Anders, have been begging for the next chapter and sorry I didn't read any over spring break. Um, I was just busy doing other things and um, so here we go. I will preface this, uh, just a reminder where we left off. She got left behind um, by her team and her team uh, went on to Washington DC without her. So this is the next day. So the last we left off, the mom had talked to Mr. Deming um, and he had called uh, to say he was sorry. So chapter 30, what happened today was all my fault. I should have listened. We should have all stayed home and spent the day together, but we didn't because of me. When I woke this morning, it was raining, thunder, lightning, wind, constant soaking downpour that laughed at umbrellas and raincoats. The air itself was gray and heavy, thick with too much moisture. I could hear it pounding on my window. Dad came into my room and sat down in the reading chair. He held his wrist carefully. Mom had put his arm into a sling. It's a messy day out there, he said. I nodded. Do you know your team got beat in the late round in D.C. last night, he told me. They got ninth place, a little itty bitty trophy, but they weren't my team anymore. I tried to pretend like I didn't care. I blinked hard and faced the wall. I wish I could fix this for you, Melody, Dad said as he headed out the room, out of my room. That made tears fall for real. At first, I didn't want to go to school. I had been excused because I was still supposed to be in Washington, and if I went in, I would have to sit all day within room H5 with Willie and Maria and Freddie. Seemed pointless. But as I thought about it, I changed my mind. I felt the sorry for myself start to shift into mad. And the mad made me decide I was not going to sit at home like a kicked around puppy. I was going to show up and let everyone know they hadn't beaten me. Mom leaned on my door just then and said, you want to stay home today? No one would blame you. I shook my head. No, I kicked the covers off. She sighed, okay, but the weather is ugly and I woke up with a migraine. Plus, Penny is sick and Butterscotch threw up on our carpet. I put her in the basement. Mom got me bathed and dressed and took me downstairs. Usually, Dad carries me up and down the steps, but his arm is out of commission. Mom was grunting and lifting, but did it herself. She eased me into my man manual chair. The electric chair and lightning do not mix well. She hooked up my old plexiglass talking board, ditto for Elvira, and sat down to catch her breath. Looks like we're going to have a stormy day, she said as she glanced at the wet mass outside the window. She ran a brush through my hair and whispered, I'm so sorry, Melody. I'm so sorry about all this. I reached up and touched her hand. The rain kept falling. She fixed me breakfast, scrambled eggs and cream of wheat, and fed me one spoonful at a time. She kept placing her palm on her forehead. She was unusually quiet. I wondered if she was thinking about how many more times she would have to feed me. Wearing a flappy yellow hat and a yellow duck-footed slippers, Penny wandered into the kitchen, coughing and sneezing. Mom stopped feeding me, found a Kleenex, and wiped her nose. She hated that, so she screamed like she was being tortured by enemy spies. Normally, would my Mom would make a game of it and wipe Doodle's nose as well to make Penny tolerate it better. But with her headache, she didn't feel up to it. The phone rang. Mom answered, one spoon in one hand, a dirty Kleenex in the other. Hello? You what? You need me to come in? I'm off today. I'm supposed to be in Washington. It's a long story, she said. I cringed and Penny kept howling. She ought to put Penny in the basement with a dog, I thought. Butterscotch was scratching furiously at the basement stairs. Penny, please, Mom cried out. I can't even hear. Penny quieted down a little bit, only because she squatted down on the floor and was putting both hands in water Butterscotch's water bowl, sloshing water all over the floor. Mom listened for a minute and then said on the phone, how bad was the accident? Ooh, lots of injuries? Okay, I'll be there, but I am going to have to wait until I can get my daughter on the school bus. She hung up the phone and sighed and squeezed the tissue into her fist. Chuck, she said, I have to go into the hospital. There's a bad accident on the freeway. Are you dressed and ready? Dad came downstairs still in his pajamas. I'm not going in today, he said. You never take the day off, Mom said, surprise on her face. My wrist is aching, the weather is awful, and Penny has a cold. Why don't you just stay home with me, he said. But no, I kicked and shrieked, insisting, I can't miss today. I can't go. 
Mom just put her head in her hands. Can't Penny get her hands out of the dog dish? Dad ripped a bunch of paper towels from the roll, cleaned up Penny's mess, and wiped her nose with a wet paper towel. And that started the screaming all over again. Her shriek became another shriek. That's when she reached over and knocked over the orange juice on my tray. My clean blouse was now a soppy mess. I thought she did that on purpose. Mom just shrugged her shoulders and yanked one shirt, yanked off my shirt in one swift motion. She told Dad, I don't know why, but Melody is determined to go to school, so she may as well just go. I couldn't explain to them, but I just wanted to see Catherine. She would talk to me and make me feel better. She's a college kid. She would know what to say. And I wanted to give her that card today. It took mom several minutes to find a clean new shirt for me until she remembered that all my clean clothes were in my suitcase. When she rolled the red suitcase into the kitchen, I looked at her and then looked away. I refused to cry anymore. For some reason, the bus came early that morning. I had just gotten my clean shirt on, my book bag still needed to be packed with my lunch and Catherine's card, and I had to go to the bathroom. Even over the noise of the rain and thunder, the honk of the bus blared through. As always, it sounded like a goose in pain. I heard Dad open the front door, wave to the driver, and yell, Don't wait, Gus, we're not ready yet. The driver, a sandy-haired guy who'd have been on this route for a couple of years, beeped once more and then rumbled the bus on. Bus is cool. Gus is cool, and he usually waits a few minutes as parents hustle to get their kids out of the houses. It takes kids like us a little longer to get it together in the morning. Melody, will you please just stay home with Dad and Penny today? Please, as she lifted me off of the toilet. It's such an icky day. I cried and kicked, shaking my head. No, no, no. I don't know why it was so important, but I knew I had to show up. Maybe I just wanted everyone to know what the team had done to me. I don't know. I just knew that I needed to go to school. Mom sighed, pulled on my jeans. When I got back into my chair, I pointed to the words, thanks, and mom. She shook her head and stuffed my lunch into the book bag. The rain was not letting up, so mom took a deep breath and started the process of loading me into the car. When I ride the bus, I simply roll down the ramp, down the driveway, onto the bus lift, and a specially designed area of the bus that straps my chair into place. But when I ride in the car, it involves a whole process of taking everything apart, putting together me, my chair, and my stuff. Even with a manual chair, it is a pain. Dad was no help. With his arm in a sling, he shrugged and tried to look like he was sorry he couldn't come out and lend Mom a hand. I think he was enjoying it a little bit, and that made Mom really mad. The wind and the rain, if anything, had gotten worse. Mom draped a huge plastic raincoat over me and my chair, and another one over her in, over herself. But in seconds, the hood's blown off, and our heads were soaked. We rode slowly down the wheelchair ramp, with the wind whipping at us and the rain attacking us from all sides. I thought it was kind of exciting. I had never seen the sky so dark at 8 o'clock in the morning. The thunder and the wind made it feel like a scene from a really good movie. My hair is short and curly, and I think it looks kind of cute when it's wet. Good thing. Mom hates it when her hair gets wet. It's stringy and limp, and I gotta admit, Mom with wet hair should look hide in the closet. She opened the car door on the passenger side, and the wind blew it shut. She did it again. This time, she used me and my chair as a doorstop. The front seat of the car, of course, was soaked. She lifted me into the seat, strapped me in, and began the process of collapsing my chair. Fortunately, most of my chair is plastic and leather and metal, so I knew it would stay damp all day, even if someone wiped it off real good when I got to school. Mom placed my chair with my communication board in the back of the, in the, back of the SUV. When she shut the trunk, she slammed it. The rain continued to fall, and by the time she got into the driver's seat, she was a dripping mess and in a terrible mood. I wish I could just go back to bed, she said as she put the key in the ignition. My head is killing me. Why did I even agree to go to work? I'm supposed to be off today, with you in Washington. I kicked my legs a little, but only a little. I didn't want to upset her even more. That's when I glanced down and realized she'd forgotten my book bag. Catherine's card. I reached over and grabbed Mom's arm and pointed to my feet. What? she said. I kicked and pointed and grunted. Then I pointed to the house. Dad, who had changed into gray sweats, was standing at the front door grinning with my denim book bag in his right hand. 
I could see Penny still in her little yellow duck pajamas and now a yellow rain hat standing behind him. She had Doodle and Mom's red umbrella in her hands. Lightning was crackling. Thunder. The rain was pouring. I watched Mom's hands tighten around the steering wheel. She made a noise that sounded something like, Ah! Flung open the car door and stomped back into the storm, up the ramp, snatched the book bag from Dad. She was sopped by the time she got back in the car. Dad waved his bandaged arm from the porch one last time and turned and walked back into the dryness of the house. And I watched as the front door almost closed. And that's when I saw a small yellow bundle of yellow dragging a red umbrella dart out of the house. I only saw for a second, but I saw. So I kicked and I screamed and I flailed my arms. The windows were almost completely fogged up and they got even worse as I continued to act like I was possessed by demons. Mom was looking at me like I had lost my mind and she screamed at me, stop it, are you crazy? And I'll read the rest in a bit. <laughs>